I thought it was an interesting experience. I'd wanted, if possible, to include other perspectives, not just my own. And the more I thought about it, the more it made sense to have views in this that were radically different to mine. So given that there's like, whatever there is, a 60 year difference between the two of us, we're gonna get different ways of looking at things. But what I found that was interesting to me was that working with people in class and so on, it wasn't just the ones that ended up in the show, it was also ideas that some of the students had that sort of percolated through into my work too. I found myself going back to the studio and doing things. It's like when, you remember when we did this, when we talked about how to do that lettering there for the Me Too? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. I went back to the studio and returned to doing some of that lettering up there, which I hadn't done in years and years and years. So what about you? What was it like? Um, it was fun and like, it was fun working with you because you're a really great teacher because before I didn't know how to do those letters and some of my ideas you helped me with, so that was fun too. I, what do you think about the ideas? Because it's hard, isn't it? You, you end up with all these ideas. How do you, were, you, were you able to organize them or was that something else that came about as a result of, I don't know what, collaboration is what it is really? Yeah. Um, I think I wouldn't really have as much ideas if we didn't go over what it was about because it was yeah. supposed to be about like the past years and COVID and all the movements and stuff. Yeah. And when I when when it when it finally went up on the walls in here, I realized that one of the ideas I'd had was that um, one of the things that happened to me in the last two years is that I ended up having these really strange dreams. And when we put everything up on the wall, I thought to myself, well, this is it. This is what it looked like. It's just a really odd dream. What did you think about having to work in such a tight space? Because these roundels are small. I mean, there isn't much room. Um, it was kind of hard, but I feel like if I had a bigger one, it would be even harder to come up with like a bigger idea and stuff. But um, I think it was better for us to work in smaller circles and then work up to maybe working into bigger ones. Oh, that's ones. interesting. So the focus, the fact that you had to make it really focused mm -hmm. actually helped. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. But maybe some people had a harder time because they might have had a lot of ideas and couldn't put it in one little circle, but mine's, yeah. is, mine's is pretty easy. Yeah, I don't know that it's easy. You want to talk about this a bit, what it means to you? I mean, why, why you chose the images you did? Um, so the GOAT stands for, um, so like greatest of all time. So um, the woman represent, I mean like woman, but the GOAT represents greatest of all time, saying women are greatest of all time. And then the Me Too movement was like um, a women's movement. So that's why I added that and then the words are like all scrambled together because in the past two years there was like a lot going on. So um, everybody's minds were everywhere. So that's what the letters represent. Yeah, that's great. What would you say to somebody who says, well, there's nothing in there about COVID? Um, I mean, why was, uh, here, I suppose I'd phrase that another way. Why was this to you? so significant looking back compared to something like COVID? Um, because um, even though COVID was a really big thing, I feel like a lot of people just focused on that while there was so much other stuff going on. So um, I just kind of took other stuff around COVID, like yeah. Black Lives Matter and yeah. the women's movement, then COVID because everybody was just focused on that one thing and I wanted to think outside the box. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I found myself spending a lot of time thinking about the women's movement. I mean, it made, it was, it was almost as if because we were stuck inside, yeah. you could focus on it more and really think about it as opposed to just, you know, getting on with your life and ignoring it. When I was talking about ideas coming from you guys, 
one of the ideas that was coming over and over again was this, the focus on the Me Too movement and the rest. And that's partly why I went back and found these images. Because I think if, you look, if you're going to look at something like Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. or Me Too, you've got to, you know, you've got to have a sense of history. You've got to have a sense of where this is coming from, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that's another reason, that's another idea that came from because um, I was kind of researching and learning about history about women and I, I realized how like tough it was for them and they didn't have that much rights as men, so. Which then makes you think about your own family, right? Yeah. The women in your own family and what they had to deal with, yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the time, um, is the time like it's a clock and then that's told but um it's when george floyd passed away yeah. because um the black lives matter movement was a big thing since the past two years and um the people on it represent like how lgbtq and trans people have been been more accepting these past years of people and stuff so that's why i put a man on a woman's body and a woman on a man's body and then the patterns just came to mind and I just freehanded it by myself so yeah I love the patterns well you know I do I love those patterns I think they're great did you I know we talked about this a little bit in class but did you um were you worried that by taking two ideas Mm -hmm. the George Floyd the, the the Black Lives Matter idea and then the LGBTQ idea Were you worried at all that that would become muddled, confusing? Um, I did think about that, but um, I wanted to do as much as I could before it was time, like time was up. (laughs) Wanted to squeeze it all in. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Well, I think it works. Uh, Well, I, I know it works because on Friday at the opening, there were various people who came up to me and asked me about it. And I thought that was great. Can you talk, why did you, why did you have the feet sticking out of the circle? He was just a really, he was just a really tall picture. That was it? Yeah. It was just practical? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know, that, it's weird, isn't it, how that works sometimes? Because yeah. I think it's a great idea, but I mean, it, it came about entirely because you had a problem, right? Yeah. Um, and um, the people also represent, like, basically, people can really be who they are now in this generation mm. than, like, before, because... Did you like the way we put it? We put it next to this one of mine, which is all about people protesting about the right to be who they want to be. I didn't even realize that. You didn't realize that, yeah. No. There's all these little connections throughout the show where so that one up there yes sir i am here that statement of i am fits with all these protests here and also with your piece and then leads on into some of these others but i like this this little cluster here i think is great yeah it comes on it like comes together yeah right look at all of them and it's funny because even though I was, I was imagining most of this in my head all along, all along, you don't really know until you put them up. Yeah, that's how it was with the circles. Like, <laughs> I thought it was going to be messed up and stuff, and then when it was done, I was like, oh, wow. This, this actually works. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's magic. It really is. Um, I've been thinking about making... I mean, it doesn't really have a lot to do with what's in here, but it's art, but I've been thinking of making, like, sculptures and stuff like mugs and stuff like that like cups and bowls and plates because I just really always thought of doing that and then I like painting so painting it after would be fun but this I would actually do again because I didn't really think about stuff like this until he taught us about it so um, if I had a chance I would do this again. Well, of course, if you're really thinking about ceramics and stuff, you know, th- that sort of figurative lettering that you're doing up there would look incredible. Oh, yeah, you were, you were telling me. I did say that before. Didn't I? I mean, it, 
That's what it reminds me of. I mean, it would, that would be amazing. Yeah. You do an entire dinner service in that pattern, I'd buy it. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, is this the only thing, like, art that you do? Or do you uh, good question. <laughs> right now, and for the last 10 years or so, I've been working with um, collage. I mean, actually, actually finding images and then incorporating them into other media. But before that, no, it was all painting and drawing. And I also did a lot of work in the theater. So I did a lot of directing and, you know, stage design and stuff like that. So like a lot of people, I've moved through various phases. I find this, I find working this way really interesting. So something like this, I mean, that background there, is all me. All these circles around the sides are all me. The frame is me. But then the rest, putting these images that I found from other sources in there, I still find that an interesting juxtaposition. You know what I mean? It's something that um, gets the old creative juices flowing. I don't know where I got the letters from. I think I might have cut those out. Oh, I don't know whether I, I don't think I did them. I don't know actually. That's another thing that happens with this. When you've done them in after a while, you can't remember what you did and what you didn't. This one, for instance, is almost all drawing. I mean, those four images, five images, are obviously taken from other sources, but the rest of this is me. How long did it take you to just do oh, this? God forever. It took a it's long like time. A long time. It took, I, you know what it, where it came from? It was, have you ever seen paintings by Australian Aborigines? Mm. They, they, do, they use dots oh, yes. all the time. So I wanted to do something like that, but I also wanted to do something that was my, it was my vision of COVID, but it's not really a medical diagram. But it could almost be one with these little circles and things. So this is a great example of where I thought of the technique, I thought of the idea. I wanted these figures of people who were damaged or restricted in some way. And then I started. And your question is the right one, because it then took so much longer than I was expecting. It, took, it really didn't take a long time. Yeah, I wanted to have, I wanted the idea, because there's a, there's the idea in certain cultures of the tree of life. You come across it in Africa and also in Scandinavia and so on. But I want it to be, it to be different, so it looks like a tree, but it's actually this tree that's dangerous, that's malicious, that, it, you know, it could kill us. So that's why I did this whole thing. And there's a whole, I don't even see it. See that there's a whole other pattern behind it. You see this very light gray color? That's what I started with. So that's, that's the original design. And then I kept putting layers on top of it. That's how I did it. Yeah, that's how the circles was. Like, you start off with one and then you think of something else and add. Yes, that's right. And the good thing about working with collage, of course, is if it doesn't work, you can always paste something else right on top of it, which is great. As opposed to erasing and starting again. But all of the ones that have... There's another one over here, but I'll show you this one, and then... This is... This is where... I wanted to do something about... Black Lives Matter and the violence against Asian American women. And I decided that rather than have lots and lots of pictures, I'd just have two. Mm -hmm. And they would represent that. And then I thought, I, I started work and I, I had this one image. And I thought, well, what if I work in black and white and grids? So we show the women being imprisoned by lines, as it were. 
but I didn't have enough images that would do that for me, so I had to draw the rest. So apart from these central photographs, everything else in here is drawn by me to try to get that idea of um, imprisonment, restriction. And these squares down here are all filled with the names of great books by African-American and Asian-American writers. So that's a good example of the way, more often than not, I work. It's a sort of mixture of the two. Really. These guys, yeah, it's the idea that, if you look, they're breaking apart. The grid is breaking apart in one way or another, and they're all incomplete. And the idea is that everything here is, even as these women are being restricted, imprisoned, the whole structure is falling apart. Because I personally believe that if you're trying to restrict individual freedom, you can do it for a certain amount of time, but in the end, it'll come back and defeat you. You know what I mean? It'll just devour you. It's like the old idea about hatred. Hatred will consume you in the end. This is another one that's a bit like the one over there. There's this giant snake that's going through human history.